realization of a new research infrastructure in Belgium, this is Mira, and how it can contribute to the Forium story or the Molten Salt story. I'll try to illustrate that to you. But before I start, I would like to say a few things. This morning was said, what is the average age in the room, etc. The average age of Mira team, 120 people, is 32 years. Second, when we do nuclear, I love to go to the 50s and do the job that has been done in the 50s, where you can invent a reactor and one year later it is built. But that time is over. You like it or you dislike it. The society have changed. Safety authorities are existing and different from that time. And if you never spoke to a safety authority, you can be disappointed with your dreams. But it doesn't exclude that you should have dreams, because life without dreams is not worth living. So then when you have a dream, don't look to the time it takes you to get to the top of the. Make your dream very high, like Everest mountain then you don't lose your objective. You see it from every corner. Make the journey to get there very enjoyable and make happiness with your team out of that journey. And last but not least, every person in your team is very important. The one who gives you a burst of energy and makes you a jump of progress in your project as one as the one who is producing a little tiny amount of work, but staying with you all the journey of 20 years. So uh, what I will tell you here is 20 years of effort in 15 minutes summarized. This is what would be looking like Mira on our site of Mall, where this is the largest indeed nuclear research center in the country. Here you see the BR2 reactor, which is existing. And I would like to say to Hayes, many research reactors have pool site facilities, and they are having high fluxes. And the BR2 is having fluxes of 10 to the 15 neutron per square centimeter per second. And actually, this is the highest flux you can find in the world. But that's not the purpose of the topic here. <laughs> The colleagues of Netherlands, I'm used to work with them for many years. They are the only country expressing neutron fluxes in square meters. Then they have the highest fluxes, 10 to the 18. <laughs> OK, this being said, what Belgium have decided just two months ago, or yeah, two months ago, the 7th of September, Belgium, after 20 years of effort on the Mira project, decided to build it, and it allocated half a billion euro, more than half a billion, for this period, of which nearly 300 million will be building this facility, Minerva, which is the first part of the accelerator of Mira, coupled to the proton target facility, and this money will be spent in these seven years. Another 115 million euro will be for further designing the reactor of Mira and the uh, second part of the accelerator up to 600 MeV. And we even secured operating cost for our facility. It's nice to build facilities, but it costs you a lot to operate them. Don't forget that. So this means that the decision of the Belgian government is not simply getting rid of an annoying person that is not willing to give up during 20 years but they are concerned about making a project that will work and have operating costs. So we also have been requested to create a international uh, organization to welcome international partnership in the project. We are not looking for people to invest in our nuclear research center, but we are looking for people willing and interested to invest in the project. Therefore, the Belgian government said we have to make an apart 
international organization, non-profit organization, to manage the project. And last but not least, our State Secretary for Foreign Trade has been confirmed to promote the international promotion of this project and look for the international participation. So what's MIRA? It's an accelerator-driven system coupling a 600 MeV of proton uh, particles accelerator, LINAC, with a 4 milliamp total current with two injectors and going here, shooting in the center of the reactor on the lead bismuth, which is our coolant we have chosen for the reactor, and where we create these spallation neutrons because our reactor is subcritical and have a K effective of 0 0.95. The total power we generate is ranging between 65 to 100 megawatt thermal in the reactor. We do also use for cooling the reactor the LBE. The lead bismuth tactic, already five minutes? My God, I just started. Yeah. Ah, okay. But uh, it's, you, don't should, you should look at, I start three minutes ago. I got 15 minutes there, my dear. You have stopped then the others too. Okay. Uh, well, we have, you have to be fair. Okay, we do multi-purpose research facility. And actually the main application is this one, dealing with the waste treatment. Licensing, I said it's not an easy task. We started officially licensing in a formal way. We started informally in 2001. We started formally in 2011. And we do approach this by identifying focus points which are dealing with the innovative things of this project. When you are dealing with a new technology you want to start, you should also take into account our licensing authorities are used, trained to license a given technology, and they have to learn the new technologies. Good thing is that after that work, we got actually an opinion from licensing authority of Belgium that they didn't see any showstopper, and this has been delivered to us in November 2017, which allowed our government to take the decision. Otherwise, we have been sent back home and no money. We also started phase one official licensing, not pre-licensing, already since September 2016. So what's that? This is the first part that we are going to build, the 100 MeV coupled to a proton target facility I will show you. Phase two, upgrade the accelerator. Phase three, build the reactor. Why we do that? We were trying to build everything in one shot. It has been very hard to get around with the funding of 1.6 billion euro in one shot. So we spread the investment and we reduce the technical risk. This is the proton target facility we want to couple to our accelerator of 100 MeV, the beam entering here. So this is the, this building that you are seeing here. The beam enters here and we have different target positions where one of them is an ISOL target, another is proton target, and another for material, for fusion material. The total planning is that we are willing to finish this phase one by 26. This will be a very important date because there we can decide to build phase two and three between 27 and 33. And this will depend of three things, economic and money, so that we find partners willing to jump with us from there on or even prior to that, that we finish the phase one and we license it and we show the reliability. And third, we have a consortium and the Federal Nuclear Agency of Belgium decides that the licensing is doable and give us a construction permit in here. This is what it will look like. So this is the green part is actually the first phase and then when we build everything, it looks like this one, 500 meter by 200 meter, the footprint. We are listed in the S3 since 2010. We have been renewed in the last, in 2018. We are present in the set plan of European uh, Commission. We are eligible for the EIB uh, loans because of the 
fact that we have positioned ourselves there. We are in the Juncker plan. We have a very large network of collaboration and how we can contribute to the thorium. I think the apparently the time you are allowed to talk is inverse proportional to the money you have. So I have half a billion that I got five minutes to talk. <laughs> so this is a design of an accelerator-driven thorium reactor that has been proposed by Jacobs on basis of uh, Carlo Rubia CERN project. And what you see is that they want to have a subcritical reactor, which is not molten, but it will be solid fuel. And the reason they want to do it with ADS is to avoid putting initially any uranium or plutonium in the cycle. So they stay on pure thorium cycle. So not contaminating with uranium-235 or even worse, plutonium-239. The reason for that is to avoid the accumulation of minor actinide. One of the good things we all time make propaganda about thorium, we say, we don't produce minor actinide like the uranium cycle. But if we will start by putting plutonium to start our cycle, we have difficulty. Second thing, actually, we are a nuclear research center SCKCN, working for 20 years on thorium for different aspects, starting from actually core designs as well as code development for the behavior of the thorium. We have fuel fabrication capacity together with in co uh, collaboration with ITU, but we produce pellets in our place. We can do rig developments for irradiation in the BR2. We were doing irradiations for more than 15 years in the BR2 for qualifying that fuel. And later we will do that in Mira. We have very well equipped uh, post-irradiation examination in our hot labs for the thorium. And also supplemented with a series of codes that we have developed specifically for the thorium. As my time is finished, I stop here. The good thing we have, I told you, is very young people. Then they will be even the old crocodiles and dinosaurs will disappear even if we are in the dinosaurs uh, museum. There are young people that will be building these things because they are, we have talented people working on it. And they believe in their project because I found one story that has been said by Seed is that when you have a team with different specialities working together, they reach their objective. They are really not working for the money. They get you, you have to watch that you got them money, but they are working with passionated on their project. And that is very what we succeeded to do with this team. And so by 21, we will be breaking the ground for this facility in Mold. Thank you very much.